Let's talk a little bit about Camtasia behaviors in version 9. Behaviors are essentially just pre-configured animations. And I gotta say, I like them. I like these quite a bit because they take a lot of the tedious work of creating animations kind of out of the equation or make it very easy to just drop in pre-configured animations and end up with some very interesting effects and stuff. So the way you kind of get to those and, and work on them, first of all, on your, this used to be called the ribbon, but basically your panel of options over here. If you hover over behaviors, one little trick is that you'll notice that next to behaviors, the word behaviors in the little pop-up box there, there's an O. So if you press the O key on your keyboard, uh, right now I'm in my library, but if I press O, boom, it goes to behaviors. And that might not seem like a big tip or anything, but actually, as you get used to stuff, I like to use hotkeys and being able to just punch around as opposed to, you know, always using my mouse is just kind of a handy thing. So behaviors are, like I mentioned, pre-configured animations. And once you get on the behaviors tab here, then what you can do is kind of hover over all of the different pre-done effects. This one is called drifting and it will give you a little bit of a preview, right? And I'm not going to go over all of those or anything like that. Just be aware that these are the kinds of things that you can do and they have kind of names to them. The names eh, kind of describe what the action is. I'm going to scooch this up just a bit so we have a little more room on the timeline and on the timeline I've just kind of thrown in some assets here. So here I have a text call out. Here I have one of the icons from the library. Uh, you know, more icons, more text. This is an image. Behaviors can be applied to anything on the timeline except audio. You can't really animate audio. <laughs> but anything else, video clips, these icons, right, or images. This is just an image I kicked out of PowerPoint. So that's kind of the scoop. We can add these pre-configured animations to pretty much any assets that we have on the timeline. Okay? And the way that you add them is you just go to your behaviors tab and I'm just going to pick one here and I'm going to apply it. And the way you do that is you just grab it, drag it, and drop it on whatever it is you want to animate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this roll. We'll kind of see the animation. Okay, so if you notice what happens there, and I'm going to zoom out on the canvas. So it starts way off the canvas, and then it swings in and it does a little bobble thing and then it animates out right I could certainly do this animation in Camtasia 8 but you know there's a bunch of steps in there and a whole bunch of work but you'll notice that to add that complete animation all I did was literally drop this down onto this asset onto this little monitor image so once you've dropped one down onto the element on the timeline, what you'll see here is that you have this little arrow thingy here. And if I click on that, we'll see that I have this little drifting bar here, which means that I have added this effect to this asset. And if you have your properties window open, I'll close it right now, but if you don't see your properties here, you click this button right here. Actually, let me, uh, I'll go ahead and delete that for a second. So on my properties now, all I see is the element, right? So these are the visual properties for this icon. And this monitor icon is just out of the library. When I drop a behavior down on it, watch what happens is that now I have another tab right here that are the behavior properties. So don't get confused. If I want to modify 
the attributes of the icon itself, right? And then once I've added a behavior, I now have a set of properties for that behavior. Okay, so if you want to know which ones you have, you can just kind of click on it here and understand that I can click right here to get to the behaviors tab or you can make sure you are clicked up here to modify the behaviors. Let's zoom this a bit and just kind of walk through a couple of things that are going to be kind of useful. What you notice is when I said they are pre-configured animations, not only does it animate in, right, but it also by default animates during and then it has an exit animation. So that's important to keep in mind. All of the behaviors, at least all of them that I've tested, and I think I've used them all, have an in, a duration, and an out. Okay, and one of the things that was making me nuts right off the bat was, yeah, I wanted it to animate in, but what you'll find is that every one of these has some kind of funky animation going on during. Well, a lot of times I don't want that. <laughs> you know, I might want the in and out animations, but the secret sauce is that for whatever one of those three animations you don't want, all you have to do is go to the proper tab. So I'm going to click during and under style, I'm going to say none. Okay, so now it's going to animate in. It's not going to do anything during, and by default, it's going to animate out. So with the little drop down here, again, these are the default animations for the drifting behavior. So certainly it's going to drift in and drift out. The nice thing about behaviors is that you have a ton of control over how those animations work without screwing around a lot. So for example, I like that drift in animation, but I didn't want it to drift out. Or even better, let's just change the behavior of the out. So it's going to drift out to the right. So what you can do is you can change things like direction. And it's going to do all of the animation work to make that happen. So that's kind of handy dandy. So playing around with the little spinners and stuff like this can help you change the defaults. And not only that, but if I didn't want that style, that drifting style, maybe I just want it to fade out, boom. All I have to do is change it right here. And then instead of flying out to the right, it's just going to fade out. Right? So that's the key thing to be aware of, is that there are three animations for each behavior. You can mix and match them as far as which ones you choose for each of those three elements, in, during, and out. And you can play around with a whole bunch of different parameters here, uh, including the speed at which it happens and just, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that's kind of a, a nice little deal there. And again, I'm not going to get into absolutely every one of these because those are the main things that you really want to kind of know in order to begin to start playing with them and figuring out which ones you like best, right, and stuff like that. To delete one of these, I would click on it here and you can either just hit the delete key or right click and delete or once I have it selected here you can also delete it from the properties right so those are a couple of things now animating the icons and video clips and graphics and stuff is kind of fun but one of the things I like the behaviors for most of all is text you can get some pretty darn nice text effects and in fact, if you hover over these, you'll notice that the preview is of a text element. So let's just kind of try a couple of these. I'm going to do the reveal. 
and drop it on this text element. And then I'm going to go ahead and just play this. Very nice entrance effect. I like it. It's subtle. Uh, we can make it as crazy as we want, right, with a lot of the different settings here. Change directions and, uh, you know, all that good kind of stuff. I used to actually do almost all this kind of text animation in PowerPoint and then export that as a video and then pull it into Camtasia. What I found, and I'll show you an example of this in a minute, is that I can do some very interesting and complex text animations with a high degree of control over the timing and all of that good stuff just using behaviors. So that's pretty sweet little deal there. And again, the same thing is true with these kinds of behaviors you're going to get in, during, and then out. For text, I find that I've been turning the during to none, like more often than not. But, you know, you could get some interesting effects. For example, here, I don't know, let's make it kind of pulsate <laughs> or something like that. And I'll try to scrub through here. It kind of pulsates. <laughs> So maybe that's the kind of effect that you want, and it's kind of cool. So you can play with a ton of different things and just kind of have yourself a, a grand old time with it. There's not a lot of documentation or anything when it comes to like some of these movements, easing in, ease out, and stuff like that. You just literally got to kind of play with it, and some of these get more complex than others. So that's kind of the scoop on that. Uh, let's try this for a second. Here I'm back on my little monitor icon. That animation. On the during part, I set it to none, right? So let's say that I want to apply that same effect to this icon. Well, instead of dragging it down from behaviors again and having to go in here and configure the in, the out, you know, the during and stuff, here's a simpler way. Once you get one of these kind of configured the way you want, if you want something else to behave the same way, what you can do is you right click on it and you say copy effects. Then I can go over here click on the object that I want to apply that modified behavior to, right click and say paste effects. And what you'll notice there was, oh, boom, it added behaviors. So let's click on that. And if we go to during, you'll see that everything that I set, the in, the out, the fade, the speed, the, you know, all that good stuff is now copied onto this and I don't have to screw around with it anymore, right? In fact, let's try this. If, for example, I have an asset that I want to use all the time and I kind of want these modified behaviors, I'm, I'm going to try it with a text effect. So let's say I've configured this the way that I like it. You know, I've made a whole bunch of tweaks here and stuff to the behavior. I'm thinking what I can do is then right click and add it to library and give it a name, text effect or text behavior one, I don't know, something like that. And at that point, I'm going to drop it on the timeline here. And now I have a modified asset that has all the behaviors that I can reuse. And of course, since it's just text, all I have to do is modify the text and I kind of have it pre-canned. Now it suggests that, and I'm still working on how I'm going to organize this, but you know, maybe have a folder in my library called custom behaviors, you know, or something like that. So like I say, once that's done, then I can just drop it on the timeline from my library instead of going to behaviors and kind of doing it from scratch. Does that make sense? Patrick asks, can you create a custom behavior? Uh, I think that's the only way to do it, Patrick. You can't create something, as far as I know, and then save it in behaviors. So that's kind of the scoop there. So 
like I mentioned before, you can get some pretty hairy stuff going on with these animations if you want. And I do have a sample that I'll go ahead and throw at you guys. I did a little bit of a video project and it's what I call a kinetic topography video. And I wanted to kind of see what Camtasia 9 and its new animations and behaviors could do. So I created this video and it's basically a song from Maroon 5 called Maps and I just added all the text and stuff and all this stuff that's here are behaviors and it's all t I'll just expand this for a second I will give you that a project like this can be kinda like I say complex but it definitely was doable and for the vast majority of these things like I say all I did was use different behaviors and a few different animations so I'm not gonna get into all of that specifically because like I say it's kinda gruesome uh, but maybe I will someday. So for example here, let's just scrub through a couple of these. Right here, it starts off with just a kind of a simple, you know, coming in word by word. And then a nice little bit of these behaviors, right? So let me open one up. And this is the sweeter life and you'll notice that it has a behavior on it. Now I kinda monkeyed around with a bunch of these especially with things like tension. I'm not really gonna get into the offset stuff but tension a lot of these you'll kinda notice are elasticy, <laughs> if that's a word. <laughs> They'll kinda boing and stretch and you know do stuff like that. Tension is really kind of just the amount of springiness to it. So I found that I really kind of had to play around with some of this stuff. In this case of a topography video set to music based on, you know, the timing of the music. Again, not to get into too much detail and stuff, but, and again, here's a great example. I didn't really want anything going on during, and then just a, a real, see the speed here? A real fast fade out. And that's because, you know, when you're set to music, you got a tempo. And the secret here is that a lot of these animations, well, let's just see how long this is. Okay, this stays on screen for a total, including the animation, of 2.26 seconds. Some of these are, are significantly even smaller than that. So, like a single word appears and then disappears. Yeah, you got to have uh, that kind of control when you're working with something like that. So let me put a link in the chat box. You can watch the whole video here. And it, like I say, it was really an experiment and a kind of an exercise in using behaviors. So if you want to know what behaviors can do, this is probably a pretty buffed out example of exactly that. So Mike says he really likes that topography video super job. Yeah, it was interesting to me as to what you could accomplish. A couple of folks have asked me how long it took me to do that. A little over 14 hours, probably. But some of that included the learning curve. Actually, a bunch of it was the learning curve in figuring out how to make stuff come in when I wanted it with behaviors behavior and animation learning curve. So there's a bunch of learning curve stuff in there. And I was goofing around with a bunch of other stuff too. <laughs> you cannot use behaviors in Camtasia 8. That's probably worth mentioning. Uh, and then again if you hover over here you'll notice that there is a click for more help link there in the pop-up box. If you click that it's going to go to the online help file it's going to do is take you here and at that point you get a little bit of an idea you know of how to use them and stuff how to add them how to delete them mostly the things that we talked about and the copy effects trick is in there but the one thing I did want to point out is that when it comes to all of the settings under, and again, if you don't see your properties, you turn your 
button on here. When it comes to all of this stuff, like I say, and there's a whole bunch of, I don't know why they don't name these better. These are math algorithms that decide how to ease it in. A sign, well, I don't really know what that is or what effect it provides. So again, you got to just kind of play with these uh, is the only way around that. But the documentation doesn't really give any direction or definition on what that stuff is. So we're kind of on our own. And a lot of the behaviors have different properties that you can mess with. They all have certain standard ones. Uh, for example, if I wanted to change this from drifting to a different style, I don't have to delete this first and drag another behavior down. You can just switch it here. So let's just change it to grow. And now the in animation is going to be something different. So let's see what that is. Right? So it's a nice kind of pop in effect. But just be aware that you don't have to delete and replace. Now, one thing that I did find kind of interesting is if, if you drop this down, let's say I want to use a different behavior. You know, I want to grab one of these other ones here. Maybe the reveal. Ooh, that might be neat, right? If you drop this down here, you don't have access to all of the behaviors. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. You know, they got some of them, and some of them have different names. So, I don't know, that's kind of weird. So, in the case where I did want to use the reveal behavior, uh, if it doesn't show up in your, you know, stuff, you, the style you can change right here, then you would have to delete it and, you know, drop another one on. But that's kind of the school. Oh, it does have reveal. Okay. Shifting, sliding, uh, but notice there's no scale. Right, so here's scale, there's no pulsating, which is over here, so go figure. I'm not really sure about that. Was this a useful topic tonight for everybody? I know that not everybody's going to have Camtasia 9 and stuff, but we're going to kind of sprinkle these in. Uh, and in our workshops that Michelle and I are planning, that's when we'll get like really down and dirty with Camtasia 9 stuff. But we do want to get some things out for folks that are working on Camtasia 9. So, yeah, okay, everybody seems to like it. Cool. All right. Are there any other questions? Last chance. Uh, let me make sure I got all your links in the chat box. Okay, so I think we got all that. All right. I'm well, feeling good about it. Here we go. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you all next time.